In this video series, we'll explore the implementation of our K-12 STEM program, detailing how the program established a strong foundation, managed projects for program development, and created STEM pathways for students, all while aiming to prepare them as future STEM leaders. With our K-12 STEM curriculum review completed, it was now time to start the implementation process. Our STEM program consists of two major models. One model consists of courses and electives for the following disciplines, technology and design, computer science, and robotics engineering. And the other model consists of these disciplines being integrated into core subject interdisciplinary units. The beginning of the year was a time for us to really establish the foundational aspects of the STEM program. And with that, during the rest of the year, we were able to design supports for the program's future development. Without laying a strong foundation, the program can be unsure of who it's trying to serve or how to achieve its aims. Therefore, it was crucial for us to establish the following items. Our first initiative was to finalize our STEM program's philosophy statement, which demonstrates what our program stands for, what principles guide its decisions, and how it approaches its mission. It contains our values, prioritized principles, our collective approach, our target audience, and overall direction. Breaking down the philosophy statement, you can see we value an inclusive, diverse, and responsible community, students' development and application of transferable skills within real-world contexts and problems, collaborative learning and sustained inquiry, and the use of emerging technologies and creative problem-solving approaches to solve transdisciplinary problems that impact the world positively. However, it was also important to officially create a K-12 STEM department to help foster a strong collaborative learning environment, consistent curriculum development, and professional development opportunities, and ultimately elevate the STEM discipline's importance and advocate for their needs within the school. The key was to have the high school officially establish a department. Led by Lance Murgatroyd, our high school deputy principal, the high school was able to establish department and share this change to the school's upcoming planning guide that provides information of the wide range of academic opportunities available at the school. Despite these foundational elements, as a STEM department, it was essential to have a common understanding of a teaching method that is optimal in implementing our philosophy statement and STEM approach. As a result, we connected with Jaditsa Vijalba, a global ed consultant in project-based learning, or PBL, to help design and implement PBL workshops to ensure alignment and shared understanding within our department on the why, what, and how of project-based learning, and how PBL is a great tool for culturally responsive teaching, making sure that PBL is part of the department's identity. Lastly, a small group of teachers, including our curriculum coordinator, Scott Riley, came together to map out our current state of STEM at our school, looking at a scope and sequence to see what our students' STEM journey looks like from kindergarten to 12th grade. Through this process, divisions and teachers from different STEM disciplines gained an understanding of what is currently happening, but also to collectively identify areas of improvement in the STEM scope and sequence, paving the way for future development. We identified that we needed to explore the redesign of coding courses and future STEM integration into existing interdisciplinary units in the middle school, the redesign of robotics engineering and technology and design courses, and possibly new computer science courses to create new pathways in high school, alignment in common standards and identifying power standards for the whole STEM department, exploring the idea of prerequisites and required STEM courses for equitable opportunities, and collecting more data from other schools on what they are doing with their STEM program. This session also helped me to realize that we needed to have more representatives for our next scope and sequence session at the end of the year, as well as improve the criteria for our scope and sequence work to provide a well-established definition of success measures, offer guidance in decision-making, ensure alignment and justification, and enhance clarity in communication efforts in the redesign of the scope and sequence. With these identified areas of improvement, it was now time to create a system for project management and additional data collection. While we had laid a strong foundation, it was now time to help us move forward with the needs we identified during our scope and sequence work. All of a sudden, with a multitude of projects that needed to be managed effectively across multiple divisions, as a result, I decided to implement CODA, 
a powerful project management tool that centralizes information and tasks and fosters seamless collaboration. It provides a flexible platform to track diverse projects from curriculum redesign to standards alignment, ensuring everyone remains aligned and these critical projects see success. With the help from our elementary tech coordinator, Ben Summerton, we consolidated our department's assets into a streamlined workflow. To help the department understand how all the different projects work together for a common goal, I introduced the systems thinking approach. The department got to see how we will be tackling these different projects together by examining how these projects interact to create a whole, by zooming in and zooming out. Zooming in to focus on what has happened or is happening in the system, then zoom out to discover if there is a relationship between events. We answered the following questions. How do these projects interact with each other to achieve the overall goal? How does one project of the system impact other projects? Are there specific examples where this interdependence is evident? What are some potential consequences of neglecting or overlooking the interconnectedness of these projects in the system? Are there specific examples? These questions were designed to encourage teachers to think about the big picture and the interconnectedness of our projects. By exploring how projects interact and impact each other, our department can start developing a system systems thinking mindset, which means considering the entire system, not just individual parts. This is important because changes in one project can often ripple throughout the system, affecting other projects in unexpected ways. By analyzing these connections and potential consequences, our department would be better equipped to make decisions that optimize the overall success of all our projects. Along with the projects we identified that we needed to work on, we also felt that we needed to collect more data from our stakeholders as well as other schools on what they are doing with their STEM program. Data collection included visiting different schools, administering a survey to other schools who have STEM programs, and a parent copy, a listening session where parents could contribute ideas, perspectives, and aspirations for the evolution of STEM education at our school through engaging conversations with fellow parents and students. With her experience in data collection, Melissa Trainer, our middle school's math specialist and STEM lead, helped me to create a survey that could collect data on what other schools are doing with their STEM programs. Exploring program scope, collaboration strategies, scheduling, course offerings, and other aspects of the program. The data from the 22 international schools who completed the survey helped us to identify program best practices and ultimately gave us a roadmap for improving our own program. We also visited three schools. First was Taipei American School's Tech Cube, an innovation-friendly five-story facility that features open, flexible spaces that function like labs and creative spaces found in industries that focus on real-world, authentic projects. We also visited the United World College Southeast Asia Dover campus, specifically for their Ideas Hub, a space designed to spark students' creativity and innovation, including woodworking, crafting, textiles, prototyping, and coding, with their STEM program highly focused on creative problem solving and design thinking. And last, we visited ITE College Central, a post-secondary school that offers courses in electronics and information communication technology and engineering. Combined with industry partnerships, ITE College Central provides real-world learning experiences with unique training facilities, including a real Boeing 737 aircraft. During our parent coffee session, we focused on gathering parent input on the future of STEM education. Parents discussed their visions for their children's success, brainstormed approaches to prepare them for a changing world, and envisioned what an ideal STEM program at SAS would look like. They even playfully considered how to invest in the program itself. With all the data we collected, including data from the previous year during our STEM curriculum review, I created summaries that highlighted key themes. Here are the key themes that we will focus on to help us move towards our ideal state for the STEM program. Industry partnerships. Establish connections with industry partners for internships and real-world project-based learning opportunities. Real-world applications. Integrate practical applications and problem-solving contexts into the STEM curriculum. Inclusive STEM program. Create accessible entry points diverse course offerings, flexible scheduling, and welcoming environments for all students for STEM. Strong STEM pathways, strengthen K-12 program connections, create clear pathways, streamline after-school programs, and explore project-based learning for a more vertically aligned and engaging STEM experience. Relevant and flexible STEM curriculum. Content that reflects industry trends and equips students with in-demand skills within the STEM fields. Supporting STEM integration. 
provide teachers with increased resources, manageable implementation plans, and professional development on integrated curriculum for successful STEM integration. Investing in STEM teachers. Prioritize attracting and retaining qualified teachers with ongoing professional development opportunities to enhance their STEM teaching skills and create a more inclusive learning environment. Strong leadership commitment. Essential to provide clear direction, resources, and ongoing support for planning, implementing, and sustaining initiatives for successful STEM education. The data collection we did really helped us with our plans to create a coherent, streamlined STEM pathway for our students through the redesign of courses and also with plans to add new courses. However, there was a bit of confusion between the three disciplines within our program. It was simple to see how each was related within our STEM program, like how the robotics experiences utilizes technology and computer science within their projects. However, there was confusion on what a technology course entailed and how it differentiated itself from the robotics courses. Ultimately, through the process of defining technology, the discipline is now called technology and design. Adding the term design emphasizes on the creative problem solving element of the discipline, as well as focuses on the human element of innovation. Students develop a broad skill set in design thinking, systems thinking, and problem solving to create solutions using technologies, considering the user experience and ensuring their creations resonate with different audiences. But this distinction then required us to identify standards that specifically align with this discipline, which led to the introduction to the STEL standards. This helps differentiate technology and design with robotics. Since robotics specializes in building and deploying robots, preparing students for careers in specific industries like manufacturing, healthcare, and logistics. With this distinction, it made it easier for us to redesign the high school technology and design and robotics courses to help create coherent, streamlined STEM pathways for students. Martin Williams, Paul Booth, and James Harvey all met to see how they could redesign their courses. As a result, two separate courses from each discipline were redesigned to be more aligned and to create a pathway. In addition, Navia Khan started the process of creating an artificial intelligence course for the following year. And with enough enrollment, we could possibly start the process of creating an AI2 course. With the help of Janelle Gaskell from the Office of Learning, the process was divided into seven sections that helped Nabia have a clarity of the deliverables that needed to be executed. Course overview, standards, standards and competencies, scope and sequence, assessment and evaluation, types of learning engagements, understanding by design plans for each unit, and finally budget and resources. So here's the current STEM pathway. Based on what students are interested in, they have a pathway of following the technology and design pathway, a computer science one, or robotics engineering. As you can see, at the start of their STEM journey, they experienced a STEM integration model, meaning that their technology and design, computer science, and robotics lessons are part of an interdisciplinary unit that involves core disciplines like social studies and science, therefore guaranteeing each student gets STEM experiences in each quarter of the year. Once students leave elementary school, they have the option to take electives and continue their pathways in technology and design, computer science, and robotics. Led by Cal Cho and Melissa Trainer, middle school coding has been through a redesign itself, aligning their courses with elementary and high school. In the years to come, we are planning to also implement the STEM integration model in the middle school, integrating STEM into their current interdisciplinary units. High school students who are interested in technology and design can continue their learning through the Engineering Design 1 and 2 course. For robotics, they can continue with Robotics 1 course and the Robotics 2 course. In Computer Science, students can continue their pathways with Computer Science 1 to a pathway in Artificial Intelligence or a pathway towards AP courses. With all this work, it was now time to map out all the changes we made to our scope and sequence. Because the initial scope and sequence was built on a spreadsheet, it became cumbersome to modify and didn't offer a clear view of the entire STEM learning journey. To address this, I decided to explore CODA for our second draft scope and sequence. With CODA, our scope and sequence is presented through easy to understand cards, where each card represents a unit or course, giving you a wealth of information at a glance. You can also filter the cards based on division or disciplines. 
This platform's flexibility also allowed for easier modifications and more importantly, provided a holistic view of students' STEM experience. However, since we also needed a way to store and access our STEM content standards, as well as connect them to our scope and sequence, we decided that Coda would be a tool for this as well. Divisions first took a look at our standards and used the REAL criteria to prioritize standards, identifying power standards. REAL stands for readiness, ensuring the standards build upon essential knowledge and skills students need for success in the next unit, course, or grade level. Endurance, focusing on knowledge and skills that are valuable beyond a single test or unit of study, fostering long-term learning. Assessed, indicating the standard is formally addressed through tests or other measures, allowing for tracking student progress. Leverage, highlighting standards that can be applied and built upon in other subjects, promoting interdisciplinary learning. I uploaded all the standards into Coda, then I identified which of the standards were power standards for each discipline. STEM teachers can now find power standards and filter them by bands and concepts. With the revised scope and sequence encoder ready, Amy Guile, our Director of Teaching and Learning, led our K-12 STEM department on a session where we examined the revised scope and sequence together and used the established criteria to ensure a cohesive, aligned, and standards-based experience for students entering at any point. By analyzing repetition, growth, and integration opportunities, we identified additional areas of improvement to create a stronger STEM program and pathways for our students. The work we've done this year with the scope and sequence work, research, data collection, and stakeholder engagement, our efforts yielded three key strategies that our department will be working on for the next five years to propel our STEM program as a world leader. First, we'll prioritize department alignment and cohesion, ensuring a seamless experience for all students across K-12. Second, we'll cultivate a future-oriented and adaptable curriculum by strategically introducing new courses, redesigning existing ones, and fostering continuous review, as well as integrating industry trends and creative problem-solving approaches for our program to remain relevant. Finally, we'll foster deep learning through STEM integration, encouraging critical thinking and innovation through real-world problem-solving tasks that bridge STEM concepts with core subjects. With these strategies established, I developed an implementation plan for each initiative that goes under each of the strategic goals. To celebrate our amazing work as a STEM department, Kelly Buxton, our elementary STEM lead, suggested that we do a K-12 STEM celebration tour. We've been on K-12 tours of other schools, but our department actually never had one for itself. This event serves not only to celebrate the incredible STEM learning journey we've created for our students, but also to foster collaboration and exchange ideas amongst our divisional teams. I want to express my deepest gratitude to the entire STEM department for their incredible dedication and hard work for creating such amazing STEM experiences for students.